For years, OpenGL has been the foundation of how Blender draws everything, from the interface to the viewport. It has been reliable enough to keep things running, but it has also shown its age. Performance can vary across systems, and some hardware-specific quirks have stuck around longer than they should. However, Vulkan brings a fundamentally different way for Blender to communicate with the GPU. While this shift happens under the hood, it directly influences how responsive and efficient Blender feels under everyday use. The issue with OpenGL is that it wasn't designed for how modern GPUs work. It is built on a state machine model, where commands run in sequence, and there is limited room for real multi-threaded performance. This is fine if you're rendering something simple, but it quickly hits a wall when you throw added complex geometry, simulations, shading, and heavy assets. Vulkan takes a different approach. It is a lower-level API that gives developers more control. So instead of using Blender sending one command at a time, Vulkan allows batches of GPU instructions to be recorded and prepared in parallel. This means better use of modern GPU and CPUs, and less guesswork when it comes to driver compatibility. Vulkan design is also much more predictable, where OpenGL leaves some precisions to the driver sometimes with unpredictable results. Vulkan demands that the application handles everything directly. That's more work for Blender developers, but it gives them a more stable and consistent foundation across platforms. The way Blender interacts with its graphics API has been restructured. Instead of being tied to OpenGL, the new GPU module is backend agnostic. Vulkan, Metal, and OpenGL all sit under a shared system. Blender doesn't need to be rewritten from scratch for its backend. It just needs a new layer that can talk to the existing rendering code. But Vulkan still requires a different way of thinking, especially when it comes to how tasks are scheduled and how memory is handled. To make that work, Blender is moving toward a new render graph system. So instead of handling everything in big chunks, like it did before, rendering is split into smaller tasks each one treated as a node in the graph. These nodes keep track of resources they need and when they are supposed to run, which makes it easier to schedule everything across multiple threads. This fits well with how Vulkan is designed and operates. It allows command buffers to be prepared ahead of time on different threads, then submitted in sync without stalling the GPU. Blender 4.3 was the first version to ship with experimental Vulkan support, but it started small, just the UI renderer on Windows and Linux. Vulkan requires tight resource tracking and explicit sync handling. Getting something as basic as the UI rendering properly is the first real test of whether Blender's Vulkan backend is viable. Initial results were solid, maybe not enough to reach full OpenGL performance, but it is fair of them to mark it as experimental. Blender's Vulkan UI renderer ran across a wide range of GPUs from NVIDIA's GTX 900 series and upward, in addition to AMD's RX 400 series and up, and even Intel GPUs on both Windows and Linux. On Linux specifically, both the proprietary drivers and open source ones, like Masa's Ride V for AMD and AMV for Intel, manage Vulkan rendering pretty well. It wasn't flawless because there were some few quirks, like some overlay elements that didn't always show up correctly, or they would render in the wrong order. In a few cases, the UI would freeze for a moment, usually tied to how external tools like screen renderers or GPU overlays interact with Vulkan, but overall, nothing broke the experience. These were small issues, not blockers, and the rollout continued with Vulkan enabled as an operational backend. You can already switch to Vulkan in Blender's system preferences, and the team's been tracking issues reported by testers. And for now, OpenGL is still a default, but Vulkan is moving forward. Vulkan's role expanded in Blender 4.4. Cycle started using Vulkan for displaying rendered images. The shader compilation system was rewritten to take advantage of parallelism. In OpenGL, shader compilation could be a bottleneck especially in scenes with dozens of materials or high shader complexity. The process was often single-threaded and blocked the UI, 
but with Vulkan, compilation can happen across multiple threads all at once, and that is already cutting down shader loading times significantly. In a benchmark shown during Sharon Becker's talk on Vulkan being implemented in Blender, a complex scene that took 2 minutes to compile shaders in OpenGL dropped to under 10 seconds using Vulkan. And this is before any major rendering optimization. Most of the work right now is about getting Vulkan to match OpenGL in behavior, not trying to make it faster. But even in this process, performance gains are showing up, just because Vulkan handles threading and memory in a way OpenGL just can't. The move to Vulkan goes beyond simply replacing OpenGL. It enables long-term improvements that weren't practical before. Things like asynchronous rendering, smarter GPU memory management, and maybe multi-GPU rendering are now within reach. Vulkan doesn't include these features by default, but it provides a foundation where they can be implemented without fighting against the graphics API. Tooling has also seen some progress. Vulkan works within debugging tools like RenderDoc, giving developers better insight into what's happening under the hood. This helps with faster bug fixing and performance improvements. There are still a few limitations and quirks in some setups, but overall, Vulkan provides a more reliable foundation than OpenGL. With Vulkan now integrated, Blender is in a better position to expand GPU-powered features and explore more advanced viewport effects in the future. Right now, Vulkan backend is still optional. It is usable, but not complete. The UI cycles display, and some basic rendering features are already working. Development is still in progress, and while there is no set order for what will get added next, the long-term goal is to have Vulkan running everything. Behind the scenes, some of that progress is thanks to the help from outside of Blender core team. AMD, for example, had been supporting the project through the development fund, and this is helping speed up work on GPU features like Vulkan. They've also worked with Blender's dev team to make sure everything behaves well on their hardware. It's not always something you can see directly, but that kind of support makes a big difference in keeping things moving. If things stay on track, Vulkan could become the default backend in Blender 5. OpenGL will still be around, for a while at least, especially for older systems, but the focus is definitely shifting. And here's the cool part. Some of the developers have been actively inviting the community to jump in, testing it, reporting bugs, or even contributing to code, if you are into that. So if you've been curious about Blender's internals, now it is a great time to get involved. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.